Let's go to a much more interesting streaming offering Ooh. from this weekend. This one is Prey. It is a new prequel to the iconic 80s action flick Predator. This one comes from director Dan Trachtenberg. Trachtenberg hasn't done a movie since 10 Cloverfield Lane. I but know. man's Mans has been busy. Uh, he did the playtest episode of Black Mirror. He did the pilot for The Boys. He also did an episode of The Lost Symbol, which I haven't seen. But it's been a little bit too long for, for the guy, Jan, in terms of returning to features. And he's got a very interesting one here that takes the familiar movie villain of The Predator and puts, puts it in a much further back in time period than we are used to seeing which is going so cool. to the great plains of 1719 to hunt a bunch of uh komachi warriors uh it's a really really cool idea to take this very familiar thing which is so linked with like uh, modern technology and military grade weapons and remove it from all that to kind of simplify the whole prey predator situation. I thought this was a pretty awesome movie, especially given that, you know, the, the predator series has not had the most success and this has got to be one of the better movies. Uh, if not like the best since the original, right. And then it goes straight to streaming. You know, right? Uh, look, Predator. When Predators came out, I remember that one when it was still the blockbuster days. That was a movie in where they had like what it was Adrian Brody, and it, it pretty much took the first Predator movie and said, "Hey, don't you know we may also be predators as humans too?" And it's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah we got that from the first movie. It didn't knock us over the head." The Predator, when that came out, I was doing my research for it, looking back at them because I've been rewatching all of them. Do you remember all the garbage they got for this movie? The Predator uh, had a whole backlash because of an actor who was there, that Shane Black, who wrote and was right. in the original movie. Uh, it was his buddy, yeah. and he had allegations, technically convictions, I think, uh, and yep. that derailed that movie completely. Now that it's been some time, and you've got a name change, which I think is beautiful, Predator to Prey, uh, yeah. you get a it really feels solid... It feels natural, and you get a really solid story, and I would say the best way to expand a franchise, bro. Like, we've had Predator in the woods already we've had him in the city dude to to have predator fight different people in different times people have been talking about there being a samurai predator a viking predator it just the possibilities are freaking awesome yes i take all of that uh it's a beautifully shot movie man this is a film that Mm -hmm. i really wish had the ability to be seen on a bigger screen i don't know if a lot of tvs are going to do this movie justice it is a film in where they they did it in two languages, and they made it very confusing early on, which they didn't need to, because practically they dubbed it. Uh, but they wanted to make yeah, it seem like they shot two versions, you know? Yeah, it's it's not quite that. It be, It's uploaded to Hulu with a Comanche dub, which, which makes cool. it the first feature-length film ever to have a Comanche audio track for it. Which, which yeah, as you said, is very cool. Awesome. Not the same as it being shot. It's not in the same, and that's although, why they Although there's a lot weird. of spoken Comanche in the movie, in the which movie is as cool, well, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wish they had the balls to go all out with it, but I understand right. you know, it's going to go to Hulu, whatever else. It's still a cool option to have, and uh, I really like just the details that they went into this movie. This is a... I, he just does a really good job at setup and payoff. That's one of the best parts about 10 Cloverfield Lane love that Mm -hmm. movie uh and he's able to bring that style into uh this film i think that the main actress did a really good job with uh just seeing her like training montage and how she builds up and learning from her surroundings what they're able to do with the predator yeah she's fantastic what they're able to do with the (laughs) predator and the practical effects i thought was really cool um and again rewatching the the classic one it's crazy how little you see of the Predator until like really late mm-hmm. into the movie. Um, yeah, he's so a little more like it. Jaws in, yes. in in Predator, and here it's it's like a very real. It's more like uh, Freddy uh-huh. or something like, or, or Jason rather it, than. Uh, they're able yeah. to deliver, man. On some of these kills, they're able to go in, and I thought that that's that's one of the best parts about it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's certain elements of it where like maybe like the the logic is a little off 
or, or the character decisions feel a little bit strange as I feel like is par for the course in a lot of these like big blockbuster reaction movies, but it always kind of sells it through the filmmaking. And I think it's, it's Trachenberg who's really, really a- able guy. to give you kind of like the visceral feel of these moments and uh, the, the put you like, in the shoes where you either feel scared or feel suddenly empowered by the way that the action is going around, going out. Like there's this one sequence where her and her brother are finally attacking the predator. And it feels like it, I like logically it makes no sense why they would be doing so much better than like a whole group was moments ago, but the way it's shot, you, you you're with them and it makes sense and it feels awesome. Um, yeah. And it's, it's not like, I, I need uh, t- for everything to be like perfectly in alignment for it. I think ultimately uh, it's just like it's fun and effective. And like you said, like there's just some really, really good filmmaking in terms of how the set pieces play out here. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like Prey is is probably the most fun of the movies that co- came out this weekend, Easily. even with Bullet Train in theaters. Uh, I would have rather had a chance to see Prey on the big screen. 100%. I think a lot of people agree. Uh, we'll see how it does because I don't know how they value how yeah, good it's it strange. does on Hulu. But if you're going off of social media, I think people, you know, whether they love it, whether they hate it, I think it got a lot of talk. Um, yeah. And I think proved I mean, to a lot of people that they can still expand it. Yeah, it's just funny, like in this year where there's been all these surprise hits in theaters and all these stories of films making way more money than we expected them to, this probably could have been a sneaky hit for for Fox Disney and Let me throw they you decided one. against it. Yeah. I heard that there is a contract thing in where Disney has to share any theatrical releases with HBO. So if you were to consider how, uh, what was the Guillermo one that just came out? Oh, shoot. Um, Nightmare Alley. When Nightmare yeah, Alley yeah. premiered in theaters, it had got like split. a really crappy thing, and then it got split when it came to HBO, and that's happened to a lot of movies. So some theorize that they didn't want to release it because then they would have to share the streaming thing. I would still think that a theatrical run would be dope, but that's a theory right. that's been out there for that. We'll see. Yeah, we'll I mean, see how they develop it for a sequel if they're able to greenlit one. It feels like after the pandemic started, a lot of studios really like stopped valuing the idea of making 50, 60 million dollars in theaters. <laughs> and now that like movies are starting to make money again, studios are realizing, oh shoot, we could make like 60 million dollars in theaters. <laughs> we'll talk about the HBO thing soon. We will. <laughs> is, isn't it crazy? Like they're, they, they're fixing their problems from last year, but then by the time they start fixing that, they got to fix the problems from this year. And there's just always going to yep. be a problem that they're fixing. But yeah, this always definitely it. benefited from that. Uh, just from a cinematic perspective, perspective the, this is a movie that was shot to be taken in uh with all the landscapes not something that you just want to watch or, or it looks beautiful at home but it just would have looked better in a big screen simply put yeah yeah all right so we recommend prey uh, and we recommend that disney starts putting some of these movies on theaters but yeah you can catch it on hulu